Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Um, whatever time of the day that you decided to click on this tutorial, thank you. Thank you for joining us. My name is Carleen De Souza. I am an airbrush artist. Um, I also, I also specialise in aerosol um, techniques as well. But for this tutorial, we're going to be um, focusing on how to use the airbrush. As you can see, I have my compressor behind me. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna delve too deep into how this works. Um, this is a basic introduction to airbrushing, right? So for more information on like, you know, the, the gun and the compressor, you could check out some other tutorials for that. But for this, we're really focusing on, on the inks that Dale Rowney, um, that Dale Rowney make. So the compressor. The only thing that you really need to know and understand right now is your airflow. That's the, the PSI. The PSI stands for pressure, pressure something. It's pressure something, Corin. You know what, even as I was saying that, I know that's completely incorrect. Pressure is not even in the description. It's um, pounds per square inch. PPSI. Yeah, it's pounds per square inch, whatever that means. But the focus is this. <laughs> this is your PSI gauge. I never I never go over 40, not with these inks, it's not necessary. If you've got a, if you're using a heavier ink, then you might want to, you know, push it up, push it up to 50, 55, maybe even 60, but I, I don't go that far. I keep it between 35 and 40. So with with these um with these system three inks. That's the perfect setting for it. And you can actually even go lower than 30. Um, because obviously, the, the higher it is, the faster the air comes out. So you, when you're doing fine art, when you're doing fine art and details, you don't want it to be coming out too fast. Otherwise, you won't be able to con control it when it hits the surface. It will kind of hit the surface like, you know, a splat. And you don't want that. You just want it to come out nice and nice and thin. So these are the bottles. They come in, they come in these glass bottles. Um, always remember, give it a good shake so that you mix up all the pigments and you know that scientific stuff so that it's the right consistency when you take it out. Um, they all come with a dropper. So look at that, ooh, look at that. Very consistent. What you must remember though, very, 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 very important is to clean your airbrush. Like I know, I know a number of guys that they would make amazing airbrush lights today. And they, they tried it years ago. And they tried it years ago and got very frustrated with it because it can be a very slow process if you don't clean your airbrush. You've got to clean your airbrush. You've got to clean the gun. You've got to rinse between each between each colour. And, and that's not even like... Um, it's not a long process. It's literally just like, you know, when you're, when you're painting with a paintbrush... You don't just go from one colour to the next colour with the same paint on it. You rinse it, don't you? You rinse the brush off and then, you you know, you use the next colour. Same concept. You rinse, you, you flush it out, you rinse it out and you, you pour the next colour in there. It's very simple. Um, and then every now and again, you're going to have to put a bit of cleaner in it just to make sure that any, any ink that's drying up in there comes out. And you'll be able to finish a painting without having any problems with your airbrush. But if you don't have an airbrush that's clean, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. It's a nightmare. I've, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there and it's an absolute nightmare. All right, so I know that some of you guys are going to, um, you, you've bought an airbrush machine and you've probably not used it because it's not as easy. <laughs> it's not as easy as you probably thought. But I've been there. I've, I've definitely been there. I, I bought my airbrush. I bought my first airbrush machine um, 20 years ago, I bought my, fir my first airbrush machine and I, I was actually quite surprised that I was really not any good at using it. So, <laughs> in fact, you know, I was disappointed with myself that I, I, I wasn't able to just pick it up and, and start using it. So I put it back in a box and put it in a corner until, you know, another artist that I was speaking to was like, why don't you just make stencils? So I was like, okay. <laughs> that's a that's a that's a good idea. So I started making stencils and airbrushing airbrushing you know my artwork using stencils. But I really wanted to learn how to be freehand because I wanted to be able to produce the kind of 
artwork that I saw in the um, I saw at the fun fair. <laughs> That's where my main inspiration came from to want to use airbrushes in the first place because of that that softness that it has to it. But anyway, so this is a basic introduction. We won't be using stencils. Everything is going to be freehand. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, I'm just going to be demonstrating pressure, airflow, you know, the application, how you get it onto the paper, um, soft light, gradients, lines, all of that good stuff. So this is one of those tutorials that you can do along with me, hopefully. So we've got an hour, we've got an hour to get this done. So we're going to start off with some basic exercises before we get to the actual artwork. All right, let's let's get let's get this going. Let's let's get to painting. Come on, let's do this. This is a introduction to airbrushing using Daler Rowling inks. Now I use um, I like to use Systems Free, and I also like to use Aquafine. So these are the two. These are the two that I use. I also use the FW, but I mainly use the FW for um, for backgrounds. Um, so let me just quickly explain. We have the Aquafine and we have the Systems Free. Now the Systems Free, the Systems Free is actually my favourite. It's an opaque, but when you use an airbrush, you can you can actually go from light to heavy. Yeah, just depending on the flow, you can you can do everything with this. But I've um, int been introduced to Aquafine water based water coloured inks. And these are really good. Now, with an airbrush, you can't really produce a watercolour kind of feel artwork. But where these work very well is as a transparent, right? So we use the Systems Free as the opaque and we use the um, Aquafine watercolour as a transparent, which works great together. With the FW ink, um, the FW ink is kind of like an in-between. So you've got the Systems Free, which is the opaque. You'll have the um, the FW, which is um, it's in between. It's in between the Aquafine and the Systems Free. So it's not as opaque as this, and it's nowhere near as transparent as this. So that's why I use these for the background. Okay, right. So very important. Whenever you're using these. You must always give it a shake, always, always give it a shake, always make sure that your um, your lid is shut tightly. There's nothing worse than um, thinking that your lid is shut tightly and then you give it a good shake and it's, you know, it's, it's not on. So paint hits every single area in, in your room. You don't want that. I've done that. I've done that before and it's a disaster. So with these paints, you've got to understand that once these dry, they stay. So if that does happen to you, if you do accidentally get ink all over the place, clean it up immediately, all right? Okay, so that's the Aquafine ink and that's the Systems Free ink. So we also use these pens. These pens, um, these pens are actually really good. So you can see that you have your, it lets you know how much milliliters of ink that you're putting in if that's, you know, important if that's necessary. For me, it's really not. I always just put put a couple of drops in when I'm going to use a pen. So I think I've already put white in this one, green, blue, black, right? So what we're going to do, actually, let me just show you a little bit more about these, um, these paint markers. So when you get a packet, you'll get two in a pack. Um, they also already come with two nips, two nips. What, we do, what do we call them? Nips, tips, tips. Jesus Christ. So we call these tips. <laughs> they, cut, they, they each come with their own tip and an extra tip. So the extra tip really is for when you change colour. Okay. So, you know, for example, I'd probably put black in this one and I'll put white in this one. And then I won't use these two until I change colour. So these are for really when you change colour. So, you know, you can finish this, rinse it out, put new ink in and then boom, you're good to go, okay? These are really good, actually. They can be used outside, inside, um, wherever. So look, we have um, we have different sizes. So the size that I tend to use a lot is a, um, a, one, a one to two millimeter. I like this 
Yeah, they also come with, there's another tip as well that's got more of a point to it. Let's see if I can find some of those. Um, and then you've got these ones. So look at this bad boy. This is a nice fat marker, which is a um, eight to 15 millimeter tip. So you've got that one. And then you've also got this one. Oh, no, that's the same one. Let's see. This one, uh, there it is. So you have, this is, um, how thick is this one? This is a three to six millimeter. Now, like I said, these are, these are great for any surface. Once you use the, um, the inks in these, then, you know, once it's dried, it, it, it stays, it fixes. So with these, actually, even though it says FW, I tend to use the system free inks in these just because it's opaque. If you wanted something that had a little, you know, um, a little transparency or a little effect to it, then you can go with these or even the Aquafine. But for, for how I use this, I always use the system three because I want, I want my lines to be solid. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of airbrushing now It's time. So I'm just going to um, play around and show you how the airflow works. Okay, so this is my airbrush. I've only ever had the waters. It's probably my fourth one in 19 years. Um, I've got to say, this is my favourite though, because this one has a side feed and you can also turn it round. So if you want to do things on at that angle, you can with this because you can turn the cup. See, I've had ones where I've had the cups on the on the top, and um, yeah not ideal for this so this is this is my other one this is my other one which um i've got to get a piece for this but um it's another water i love this one as well but like i said this is actually my favorite because we have the side feed here so you see with this one you don't have the side feed you pour the painting on the top so with this one it would be difficult for me to do flat surfaces because the paint will fall out so this is great for when I'm doing portraits or whatever that are standing up straight. Whereas this one here, this is great for flat, for whatever, just because you can turn this, this around and it comes out. Um, actually, I'm going into this airbrush. And this, is a, this tutorial isn't really about this airbrush. This tutorial is about how to use De La Rowney inks with an airbrush. So let's, let's get rid of that. Let's go back to the basics. All right, so here we go. I'm going to um, just give you a quick demonstration with this ink. So like I said, Systems Free Aquafine. Let's just do some demonstrations with this Systems Free right now. So I'm just gonna take the black. Always give this a good shake. Always, this, this, this is very important that you shake this very well um, because you wanna make sure that all the particles the pigments, whatever you call it. All of that stuff is mixed up nice and it gives you a nice consistent flow because that's very important with this airbrush that you have a nice consistent flow. Like I said before, I've never had to put any medium. I've never had to put a medium. I've never had to wash, um, dilute this with water to have a nice flow because the consistency is 100% every single time, right? I love these inks. So give it a good shake couple of drops in the cup. That was probably about six drops. So if you've never used an airbrush before, it can be quite a scary thing because it's not the same, it's not the same thing as an actual paintbrush touching your surface. With this, you never touch the surface. Is there's always, even if it's just a small distance like that, there's always a distance from the actual surface. Okay? So this is a double action um, trigger. The first time you press it, air comes out. When you pull it back, paint comes out. See? Very simple in theory, <laughs> but it does take practice, right? So remember, two action, two action situation. Air flow, you press the button, that allows the air to come out. You can hear the compressors just kicked in. When I pull it back, that's when the paint will come out, okay? So let's just do some squiggly lines. Now, the closer you are to the paper, the sharper the lines you'll get. 
yeah? The further you are, the wider spread you have, okay? So, that is, that is your basic. Your basic understanding for the airbrushing is that the closer you are, the sharper, the sharper the lines will be, the further back you are, the more spread you get on the ink, okay? So, you see that right there? That right there happened because too much pressure is coming out and I was very close to the paper. So if I wanna do things that are close to the paper, then it, I have to make sure that my compressor is um, down to 30. So I always keep, for these inks, I always keep it at 30 to 40, yeah? Unless I'm doing backgrounds and I wanna run through it quickly, then I'll go up to 50 because the pressure, the, the PSI is how fast the, um, the paint comes out, right? So I have it on 30, 35, 40 PSI if I wanna do backgrounds because I wanna do, a, you know, I wanna get cover the space quite quickly, then I will take it up to 50, sometimes even maybe 60. We're gonna get started with our lines. So like I, I showed you, this is close, this is far, yeah? So when you wanna do skinny lines like this, you will just pull it back, you pull the trigger back just a touch because you want the lines nice and slim, yeah? The further, so I'm gonna do it the same, the same distance away from the paper, but I'm just gonna show you pulling back the trigger all the way, what kind of difference you get with the lines, yeah? So this is all the way back at a close distance. This is just a touch back. This is the trigger just a touch back at a close distance. You see, what you get there is that it's, it's so close that you're gonna have that, but it's smoothed out quite a bit, right? So I'm gonna do a full blast at a distance. Okay? I'm gonna do full blast very, very close. That's still not bad, but that's because I'm a professional. <laughs> I told you something though, after using this for 19 years, I should be able to do skinny straight lines. So you can do, you know, you can do patterns. So, you know, one side here, I've done one side skinny and I've done one side fat, yeah? So you're gonna have to get used to the distance between the paper and the actual airbrush gun, okay? So I'm just gonna color that in. So when I color in, what I like to do is I don't really like to pull back on the trigger all the way unless I'm doing backgrounds or I'm doing big fills. What I like to do is I like to build it up as I'm going along, okay? So let's just do another, let's just do another shape. So I'm just gonna do some lines and some squiggles and you're gonna do them with me, okay? So let's do some dots first. So starting off, we're gonna start off with some small dots, going into some bigger dots. So remember, the further back you pull, the more paint comes out. Yeah, if you want skinny lines, remember you do not pull back too far, okay? So that's a skinny dot, that's a medium dot, that's a bit bigger than a medium. We've got a bit bigger still, bigger still. So all I'm doing is I'm pulling back all the way and I haven't pulled back all the way yet. So that's me pulling back all the way. But you can see all of these lines coming out here. That means that I'm putting too much pressure and I'm too close. So this means too close, too much pressure. Okay, right. So really, if I want something like that, I shouldn't do it as close because I'm gonna get all of that unless I want that for my artwork. If I want that for my artwork, then that's absolutely fine. But we don't want that. So the way that you would get this dot is to take, pull back further away. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling back the trigger as I'm going. I'm not moving back, I'm just pulling back the trigger. So you can see, as I pull back the trigger, more paint comes out. So you can see that's quite heavy in there. Now, I don't really like that kind of heaviness. So what I would do is I like to keep it moving. Yeah, so I can get a nice opaque circle without too much paint. So you see the difference there? That's you know, building it up lightly, and this is just coming in strong and fast one time, yeah? So I see that I'm going closer again, closer, closer. 
closer, 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 closer. All right. So um, swirls, curls, all of that stuff is very easy to achieve with this. So you see here, I do have a lot of overspray. Sometimes that's not a problem, but sometimes it's not necessary, is it? So the reason why I'm getting overspray is because I'm coming in at an angle. And the reason why I'm doing it at an angle is because I'm doing it flat. So what I'm going to do to show you what it will look like without the overspray, without the angle on the paper, is I'm going to turn this all the way. But um, if you're doing this at home with me, I would suggest that you do it on um, on an easel. If you have an easel or tape it to the wall or whatever, just have it straight. This is just for, this is just so that I can, you know, show you how this works so that you can see everything, yeah? So now I want to do this without all the overspray. So you see the difference? So the overspray comes from an angle. So actually the overspray works all right if you're, if you're creating a gradient. So for example here, I want it to be dark on this side. So look at that. Just from the overspray alone, I've created a gradient. So there's actually quite a bit that you can achieve from just um, one colour. So you can you can create a whole black and white artwork just using black by getting to, you know getting your gradients in order. Yeah. Okay. See that gradient again? So there it is without the overspray. Okay. So that's, you know, your dots, your overspray. So remember, the closer you are and the, 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 the slight pullback will bring out the paint, but when you're doing fine lines or, you know, even close paperwork, you don't want to pull back too far because you pull back too far and this is what you would get. So even here, we were too close and we pulled back too far. So you're going to get that, right? So the idea is to avoid that. So we avoid this happening. We avoid this happening by controlling our airflow. Our airflow should be as soft as possible. Yeah, that's how you get that. All right, and that's how you get these nice... Um, skinny lines rather than these lines that are like that but that's not really about the airflow that's about the angle where I'm getting overspray okay so if you're doing it straight on the on, on the wall then you won't have overspray issues all right so I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna do the line so normally I wouldn't do the line work first but for this demonstration, it's going to be easier for you to see what I'm colouring in if I outline it first. So I'm going to outline it first and then um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to it after, after I've um, done the airbrushing. Let's get started. This is, what, um, this is what I'm going to be painting. So if you want to sketch up something, that's great. I suggest that you do that. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to fill in, fill up one of these with ink. So this is uh, the 1.2 milliliter. I'm going to fill this up with ink and then I'm just going to do the outline. So this is just a little quick demonstration. See, like I said, I don't, I don't like to fill it up to the top because sometimes it's not necessary. You get quite a bit out of this stuff. Right, so because it's brand new, as you can see, it's um, it's brand new, so we've got to do our pump action. So we pump, pump, we pump it, pump it, pump it. So you see it's starting to come through. See that? So I keep on pumping. Pump, 
pump, pump, pump, pump. See, it's coming out now. There we are. So a couple more pumps and we'll have this, this tip filled with ink. Okay, so now we're good to go. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to outline, I'm going to outline everything. So guys, this is for your benefit. Normally I wouldn't I wouldn't do this first. But it's okay that you do it if you do it first as long as when you go back over the lines you do a good job of going back over the lines of what you've already done, okay? Look at that, I've smudged it. So normally I wouldn't be, um, I normally do everything upright actually, but I try to do a video upright and um, you guys wouldn't have been able to see what I do. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm doing it flat. So we can just ignore, we can ignore this because we'll fill it in later, all right? So that's, um, that's basically how these pens work. It's very simple. You shake, you dab, yeah? So always have a bit of paper um, close by and that's for, you know, getting the ink flow going. We're going to go on to the next stage now and that will be colouring this in. So I'm going to let this dry for a minute. It won't take long to dry, but we'll let it dry for a minute. Go get a cup of tea, whatever you're doing. And we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll colour in this, this beautiful woman. We're going to get started now. Um, I've set out the, the colours that I'm going to use. So I have a couple of aquafines. These I'm going to use as the transparents. And then the rest are systems free. So we're not using too much colours for this may not even use the yellow but anyway let's get started so the first step the first step that I'm going to do is um, so I forgot to mention guys this really um what I like about these pens as well once you've let it dry if you have any like pencil lines underneath it's very easy to rub it out without rubbing out the paint so once this dries it dries solid so I've rubbed out all the pencil lines that I had before and these black lines are still as solid as I started. So let's get started guys. Let's spray this face. So remember we do it softly and it's all about the build up. It's all about the build up. So I'm pretty much using this colour as um, as a bit of a base, a base tone. So I'm keeping my distance. I'm keeping my distance from the page because there's no need for me to um, go too close for this part of it. So 
All right, that feels like enough for that layer. Let's make it a bit darker in there. So if you're doing something from your imagination, just have a just have an idea of you know light and shadow, and where should be dark, where should be shading, and where should be highlighted. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with the second brown. So I'm just doing this lightly. See, I always like to work with a soft finger. So I'm just building up the colour softly over. So I'm going in darker on this side actually because that's where I want it to be the darkest and there. now I'm going to use a transparent so sometimes for this I, I might use a transparent black but today I'm gonna to use a transparent brown. Well, I say transparent, I mean watercolor, but you know how we're using these watercolors. We're using these colors, these watercolors as transparents, okay? So, what I wanna do is I just wanna go over some of the parts where I think it should be darker. So remember, I always like to go gentle. I prefer the, agent, the gentle approach rather than the going heavy and, and thick. Because honestly, sometimes you just don't need to go in that heavy. So remember, softly does it. Get a bit of line going here. Get a bit, bit there as well, probably a bit there. Going darker on this side. All right, I think that will do it. So now I'm going to change. I'm going to change the colour. Get a bit dark there. A bit dark there. So I'm going to change the colour now. We're going to use a bit of this um, FW, this FW for the black, for the hair. And 
and we're just gonna cut we're just gonna fill in this hair solid and we'll put some some highlights in afterwards so I always go I always start with um a light color then get to the dark and then after that I'll um my highlights will always be last Okay, so I had it on the wrong pressure. It was going a bit too fast. This is much better. So I've slowed it down now. You see when you slow it down, you have more control. So this isn't coming out as smooth as I would like it. And I can tell you exactly why that is. That would be because this could do with a little clean. But I'll clean it afterwards. It's not too much of a problem. But if you find, guys, that your airbrush is, you know, kind of spluttering just a bit, that means that there's some paint that's dried up in there. So I'm going to sort out this airbrush now because um, the noise it's making and the way that it's coming out. Oh, no, it's finished. That's why. Put a bit more red in here because I'm going to do the whole top solid. Okay, so if you look on this, this doesn't look very even, so I'm going to give it another layer of red to make it completely solid. So I just gave it a proper clean, now it's running smoothly. Thank you. 
So I just realised I forgot her lips, didn't I? She needs a bit on her lips, so I'm just going to put a bit of um, a bit of transparent red on her lips. Oh, see what happened there? Too close. Whoa. So the transparents are a bit thinner than the um, the System 3. So if you want to drop your um, drop your PSI down to 30, that'll work all right. I've got mine at 40 at the minute. That's that's a bit heavy, but it's still fine. Okay, so we've got the hair in. We've got all of our solid colours in now. Should we get some background in? Now I'm just going to do the background. So remember I showed you the gradient. So at the top we're going to get lighter and lighter. There it is. So remember, we keep on going back and forth. A little out of blue. All right, more blue, more blue. So somehow I've managed to get blue on her lips. That's a minor. So remember you've got to keep it moving to get a nice a nice consistent blend of colour. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick, a quick clean because it's um, there's a bit of paint block. We're just going to finish off the the blue background, and then we're going to go into the highlights.
But I think that do. So we're just going to put a bit more red over the lips because we've got a bit of overspray with the blue. Let's just go in with a bit of solid. So I like to use white last. That's all, always my, my last colour to go to for the highlights. So we're going to just give it a, I'm not going to do too much, but of course we want to have like a little, oh, little dot there, little dot there. Let's make here white and there white. So we're going to have a little, a little highlight there, a little highlight there, a bit there. much there. Let's give her a little highlight on her shoulders. A bit there. And her shoulders there. Come around, give it a little. And of course some I've still got blue coming out in this. Sorry, I had a tint of blue coming out in that because I didn't clean it properly. I didn't rinse it properly, so I had a little bit, just a touch. All right, so let's go and um, put these highlights in here. So what we're going to do to make this look good again, or should I say great again, right, do you want a little cloud up in the sky, yeah, let's have some. Dark skies, couple of clouds, let's go. I'm not going to lie, I'm literally only doing the clouds because I still had some white left in here and I thought rather than just 
pour it back or spray it out. Let's just let's just have some clouds. Why not, eh? Bit of highlight there, highlight there. Okay. <clears throat> so if you find that you have a bit of um, the best thing to do if you've got a little block, put your finger there and pull that back. You see how it starts to bubble? That's clearing out the um, whatever block might be there. Yeah, you see that bubbling? It's getting to it, it's bringing out. So now I'm good to spray again. See that? We're good to spray again. Right. So I'm going to take a little bit of the Aquafine, um, this deeper colour, because I just want to um, create a little sh um, shadow on the top. So of course, under here, you would find that under there would be darker. Certain areas would be darker. Make a little line here, here. So you can use a, a colour that's close, or sometimes I like to use a brown because the brown, sometimes I use this on red because it works. So the way that I finish this, I'm going to use this size and I'm also going to use these two, this size here. So I'm going to just go back over the lines that I had originally made. So I honestly do prefer to just do the lines at the end because then I don't have to trace over anything. But this was for the benefit of you guys. Just so that you could see exactly what I was colouring in. It's like a colouring book, isn't it? So do you remember I had that little um the little spill here? So you can still see it there. I could get rid of it with um another coat. So all I'm gonna do with the hair, I'm just gonna um give it some lines. So you see where I put the white in, I find it easier to just go over it with the lines.
So there you have it. We have completed our first bit of artwork. So look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give her clothes a thicker outline. Why not, eh? I do not have the steadiest steel. All I want to do when it's you. That's what I write. Writing in a number one. So there you go, guys. This is how you produce a basic, a basic artwork. And then, you know, you can just see what's missing and then go in wherever you feel that you need to. But see this area here, I'm not really keen on this. So I'm gonna go back in with, um, Let me go back in here and here, but under here, this chin bit here, I don't like that. I think that that should have a bit more shadow. So we're going to use this one. So let's just take a line there. All right, we're done now. Sign your work, right? So I might sign it here. Mm. And there it is. So the hair's annoying me a bit, so I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna go over a bit of it with some more black. Okay, so that's it. Um, this is your final, this is the final piece. I hope yours came out well. Um, I hope this was a helpful tutorial. See you at the next one.